Of course, I knew that within this game of life, for every up, there is a down that one can't ascend indefinitely. But <clears throat> I suppose my mistake in this regard is thinking that, um, or associating that idea with more so short term endeavors, thinking of it as like you do one thing and you get an up and then very shortly after there's a descent in terms of your psychological state, your physical state. And what I'm dealing with now is uh, a descent after a long period of up. I mean, of course, if I look at it, <clears throat> there's been sort of this uh, microcosm, if you will, of ups and downs in that broader trend of ascending upwards. But now there's a very definite sensation of descending downwards with a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's an overall downward trend. It's the best way to say it. Inevitably, I will ascend again. Things will improve, but right now it's a little bit rough. Um, and I understand the reasons why for this. Um, namely, my... Uh, in a very objective sense, my survival prospects have been diminished. I'm no longer abiding within a situation wherein uh, survival is easy for me and I'm rewarded for very little effort. I gain more than I put in. Yeah. And it's not like that now. If you listen to my last recording, uh, at least some of the way through, you would have uh, garnered the information that I was in Ukraine at the time and had been living there for well over a year, almost a year and a half. And uh, the irony is that um, despite the ongoing situation in Ukraine that pretty much everyone listening to this is probably well aware of, um, it's a, a better place to live than most places in the world uh, for a variety of reasons um, it's much unlike the western world in the sense that uh, people there they're not working simply to exist something uh much more is given in return for their labor than what is demanded for it. Mm. And it's not the same in the majority of other places in the West. Um, one is put in a position where they have to work to survive and that's all that they're doing. They don't have time or sufficient resources f to do anything else. But it's not like that though. That wasn't my experience at least. It's, um, my experience was that it's a really fantastic country and I wish things were different and that I could stay there but I, uh, I can't so I'm elsewhere now doing something else and it's much worse but things will probably get better I'm also, um, if you've listened to previous recordings, finally uh, ending my dependence upon Kratom. And that was um, nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be, given 
the quantity that I was using daily for about half a year. And um, from what I read, I was expecting something very unpleasant. And that's not really what I got. I mean, what I'm dealing with now is unpleasant, but it's not really too much out of the ordinary for me. Um, in case anyone's interested, I'll say what I did deal with. Uh, just a little bit of fatigue, like, um, you know, if you have some caffeine dependency, stopping using caffeine. If you drink coffee every day, it's like missing a day or two drinking coffee. And uh, so I felt tired a little during the day, but not too, not debilitatingly so. And then um, in the night when it came time to go to sleep, I would just feel quite agitated, be tossing and turning, still sleeping, but just very brokenly moving around a lot. And um, that only lasted about three days, really. And then after that, it was just kind of normal for me. Back to the old anhedonia. <laughs> And um, maybe for someone that didn't previously have anhedonia before starting Kratom, they wouldn't be dealing with it, but I'm dealing with it because that's what I was dealing with before starting Kratom. So now I'm back to the old activities that I was doing before starting Kratom, which was uh, some of the reasons why I wanted to start Kratom in the first place. Namely, um some fairly unhealthy uh, alcohol use, I would say. <sighs> Cheers. And in that regard, like the last few days I've been thinking, as I've been walking around this new place I'm living in, which is fairly dismal. It's a, a peaceful place, you know? There's no war. There's no explosions, no rockets, no uh, imminent threat of invasion um, from a foreign force. But, um... <laughs> it's much worse. And as I've been walking around, I've been thinking about how there's a certain law to this reality. There are many laws to this reality, but I've been thinking about a specific law, you know, which is kind of a fundamental law, I would say. And that's how one goes about feeling good and fulfilled in this reality. And as I see it, the way that most people go about it, uh, for a variety of reasons, but maybe we'll get to that later, but the way that most people go about it is by working, striving towards things. And as they strive towards things, and thusly, eventually, perhaps, but in most cases gain some uh, quantity of those things that they desired and had worked towards, they feel fulfilled and they are thus rewarded uh, neurologically by certain hormones, you know. There's an uptake in dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, blah, blah, blah. And then, once they've attained the thing, that slowly diminishes and they have to strive towards something else. Or strive towards attaining more of the same thing. It's this constant chase, you know, it's never in this static state, it's always increasing or decreasing. And if you're not playing that game, that basically survival game, that's the way that these... Um, this mechanics of the thing fundamentally came about of course in a different setting in uh in nature that is you know you would strive towards obtaining sustenance 
in its most fundamental sense, water, shelter, food. Um, now it's a little bit different in this modern society, but the mechanics are still the same, fundamentally. And um, the only alternative to that, in terms of playing the same, rewarding the same mechanics, going through the same motions, is through some kind of substance use. Um, but it's the same, you know, you get the thing, you need more of the thing, it's always ascending or diminishing. You're never in a static state. You can try and maintain that static state, but it's always in some state of flux, you know, ascending or diminishing. And that's a large part of the game that I've been trying to play. Much to my own chagrin and personal detriment and to the detriment of people around me. And previous to that, and the evidence is in earlier recordings, I tried to find some way to be outside of that whole game entirely. It's more of a Buddhist approach to engaging with reality. But that didn't really work for me either. Maybe I haven't seen or fuck with this reality enough to be so thoroughly done with it, but I think I did thoroughly fuck with this reality enough to be done with it. But um, my conclusion was that I wanted more. You know, I wanted to be a part of this reality. I wanted to sample its fruits. I wanted to play the game in my own small way. Try and find a way to hack the system, you know, to gain the most that I could without putting in the least. At least in this conventional sense. Being a slave, really, as everyone else. I just wanted to be a human, you know? I am a human, so, surprise, surprise, spoiler alert. Um, and so I have these innate desires and needs and I want to fulfill them. I don't want to deny them in this Buddhist sense. Because I guess I surmise that in a certain sense that's all bullshit. It's all fucking bullshit. It's it's cowardice in a sense. Of course, one could present the argument that there's no point in playing a game that you can't win, which, which, which I agree, this is kind of what this life is, you know, everyone loses in the end. No matter how hard one strives, um, they lose. You could strive the hardest, and you could strive the least, but everyone loses in the end. It's just a question of how long you win for, but what does that really matter in the, the grand scale of things? On the long enough timeline, everyone loses. Everyone's a fucking loser when they die. They failed. They failed to survive. And that's all that every single organism on this fucking planet is trying to do. Survive. At all costs. You know, animals, people, we're all animals here. We're all organisms, life forms, whatever you want to call us. We're all just trying to do the same thing. Strive, maintain, perpetuate. And it the outcome is the same in every event. Death, failure, loss. Game over. So I guess... I guess the conclusion that I came to was... What is my life gonna be? Am I gonna spend my life in denial of life? Or am I gonna spend my life in living life, feeling fulfilled, feeling joyous. It might seem like a futile pursuit, but if there's only one life, you know, I mean, even if you believe in re reincarnation, we each only have one life as ourselves, unless you believe in some quantum immortality bullshit, but that's just hypothetical. What's real, what isn't hypothetical is now, right here, ourselves seeing perceiving, existing. 
I can't refute that. And so I want to make this moment a joyous one, if I can, if it's within my reach. And I suppose I perceived it that it was within my reach. So I've made to grasp for it. And I'm going to continue to grasp for it. Despite this present lull in exuberance. Summer will come again, and life will come again. Things will be better. Okay. I think that's all I have to say for now. Hopefully... Maybe you got something from this. Thanks for listening.